Man, creepy pastas suck, don't they, Aquaman? Dude, it's creepy pasta. Wait, you're not Aquaman. So who the hell are you, and why are you here? I'm that creepy reading, and I guess I'm here for some sort of, or some kind of, obligatory YouTube cameo that all the cool kids are doing these days. To be honest, I'm not really sure why I asked. I really, I really don't care. Creepypasta is stupid anyway. Excuse me, are you deaf? It's creepy pasta. It's not that hard. So you mean it has nothing to do with the filling carbohydrate made from wheat flour? What? What the fuck? No! What the hell is wrong of you? Oh. Well, all my research for this episode went into the science of pasta making. I guess that can go out the window. Anyway, what in God's name is a creepy pasta? The term creepy pasta originates from the word copy pasta, the weird internet vernacular that basically means copying and pasting a large block of text over and over. And that's pretty much what creepy pastas are, internet horror stories. And until relatively recently, I'd only casually heard about creepy pastas now and again in my various journeys around the internet. And plenty of people have asked me to talk about this subject before. But I'm not some kind of all-knowing super brain who knows literally everything ever, or am I? I did know it was something to do with horror stories, and I honest to god believe that pasta the food was somehow involved, but I never had any idea how crazy and fanatical the fandom behind something so simple as internet horror stories could possibly be. And believe me when I say it's crazy and fanatical. I mean, if you really think about it, on the surface, creepypastas are supposed to be scary good fun literature to have the intent on being a entertaining short indie horror story. It also helps bring light to writers that have no idea how to get their foothold in the writing world, and gives them a portfolio to give to publishers when they actually want to write something. It's also another great place for aspiring voice actors to hone their skills. But as usual, the content itself is virtually harmless. It's just fiction. Nothing really to get mad about, unless it's particularly poorly written like a lot of them are. But when a bunch of crazed teenagers dedicate their entire life to obsessing over a serial killing 13 year old boy who has his face burnt off, that's when things start to get a bit bizarre to me. Which leads to popular creepypastas and why they suck. Which brings me on to Jeff the Killer, Mr. Widemouth, The Pocket, Zalgo, Laughing Jack, and I could go on and on. And I don't know about you, but when I see horrible creatures designed around making you lose your sleep, I want to do nothing but ship them together and turn them into fucking Hot Topic rejects. True. However, most types of animalistic characters, to be frank, are usually safe from these types of things, such as the Rake and Mr. Widemouth. Those creatures don't usually have sequel stories, and if they do, they don't get much traction. Are you sure about that? What the fuck? But you know what, that's not really the problem. The problem is more the fact that any of this is happening in the first place. Why does the internet have to take something that could potentially be a cool idea or story, and squeeze it so hard into the ground that it loses everything that made it cool to begin with? Just look at the alien from... Alien. Over the years, it's been watered down and stretched so thin to the point where it's no longer scary. It's now more a fucking pop icon, as your kids dress up as for Halloween. The same happens with the whole creepypasta thing. You can only wear a subject or story so thin before the strands start to split, and the minute fibers collapse in on itself to reflect something that completely destroys any integrity or creativity it originally had. So let's put this into some direct creepypasta context. PASTA. Fuck off. This is an image of probably the most famous creepypasta of them all, Jeff the Killer. And you guessed it, this picture's actually pretty creepy and weird. Now let's take a look at this. All of a sudden, the creepiness the original picture had is muted. And now whenever you see or read any Jeff the Killer stories, your mind will instantly think about the anime-fied bullshit version. Perhaps it won't ruin it completely for you, but subconsciously it will always be there, festering in the back of your mind indefinitely. As much as I'd like to say I disagree with you on that note, you don't... Well, ugh, you do have a point. Recent creepypastas have lost much of their touch on the overall scare factor. I mean, just look at Slenderman. What is the root of all horror, mystery, the unknown, and, well, Slenderman's been explored to a dead end. We know his backstory, we know everything there is to know, and sure as hell, he's not fucking Mexican. Sure, there are things that are unexplained, and, but we still really get the big general picture. And those corners don't appear to be scary anymore once you shine a light on it. He's nothing more than a boogie man that no one over a certain age is afraid of anymore. Don't even try to start a creepypasta channel. No. 
Seriously. Like most genres on YouTube, there's a crazy level of competition. You have to give people a reason to care about your content. Just look at the Let's Play community. It's nearly impenetrable at this point unless you get a shout out by someone. There's a reason why there's only 7 total channels that have over 20,000 subscribers in the entire community. It's because of the oversaturation of mediocrity and the overuse of reading specific popular choices and I will not look at you, Jeff the Killer. So basically, just, just give, give up, up now! And become a lumberjack instead. I hear it's all the rage. I'm going to poison myself now. So what do we learn today, kids? Don't idolize and fangirl horrible murderous psychopaths. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't actually expect a bunch of real children to show up to answer that question, but okay. Creepy pastors, like most subjects on the internet, are nearly completely neutral by themselves. Nothing more than the most simple form of entertainment. But as I've said so many times before, and will continue to say, there's a certain level of acceptance to any fandom. A line that is crossed when just liking something turns into more than casual enjoyment. When it becomes more of a lifestyle, more than just entertainment. There's something inherently quite worrying in the idea of how attached some people get to these stupid things. And despite Despite the bad we said about the fandom, I still love it. It's a welcoming home for content creators and writers alike, even with the glaring drawbacks of some of the younger members that happen to infest our community. So if you're interested in actually producing and you think you can bring something new to the table, I highly encourage it. Don't let this video scare you off. You know what, weird mummy dude I've never spoken to before? This video has probably scared more people off than your typical run-of-the-mill shitty creepypasta. Now go away and leave me alone. Your undead assaholic creepypastiness is no longer wanted here. Go back to your own channel, you you slime. What the fuck is an assaholic? I, I, what assaholic? A assaholic? What? What? What the fuck is wrong with you? Kite man, whisk his sorry ass out of here. Yeah. Th this really isn't necessary. I was, I, I was about to leave. What? Hmm. Now how should I end this? Look at this funny picture of a dog. It like blinks and opens its eyes and <laughs> I love dogs. I mean, I mean, I, I hate dogs. Can you edit that out, please, Jonathan? So those are my thoughts on creepy pastas, pastas, what? I, I don't know. And of course, a massive thank you to that creepy reading for lending his talents over to be the first collaboration on this channel. Make sure you go and check out his stuff and tell him that I sent you. So do you have any final words? You can put whatever you like here. So what do you think? Did you like or dislike the video? I'm sure we could go on and on about this subject. Maybe we could even do a part two at some point in the future, who knows? And so as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out some of my other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye. Don't idolize and fangirl horrible murderous psychopaths. What the fuck is wrong with you?